I just want to talk to you. It's the sixth anniversary of Sandy Hook. We've been talking to Harry Connick about that. What is your view of America's relationship with guns? Because you and I come from a completely different culture, but what's your take on it? I think as an immigrant in this country, a good degree of caution is advised with these matters, as you yourself have experienced from your own outspoken views. To me, uh, I remember like when I first got here thinking, oh my god, I'm allowed a gun. That's really cool. Like, you know, and sort of thought about justifying it in innumerable ways, you know, because it's undeniable that potency, that sexiness, that power at the end of your arm. And people that knew me said, you should not get a gun. You don't have that kind of personality. You're not a person who should have deadly force at your disposal. And I thought, I should have deadly force at my disposal. And I thought about it and I went to gun range and I learned a little bit about shooting and all that kind of stuff. And in my mind, it's like I want to be able to protect my home, and protect the people I love. But, you know, like, I, I'm denied and procrastinated about it because I'm a kind of a liberal person, I suppose, at heart, and a bit of a hippie, but, you know, guns is guns, they're kind of cool. But after the uh, Sandy Hook tragedy to which you referred, I thought, how can I legitimately hold the opinions that I do and then hypocritically purchase a firearm? So, I have not. My feeling is that, uh, you know, the more guns that are available, the more likelihood of them being used incorrectly. Though. One of the things that struck me this week with the whole NSA debate and this, uh, this leaker or whistleblower, hero, traitor, whatever you want to call him, Edward Snowden, is that the uh, American psyche is very geared to the Second Amendment being absolutely sacrosanct. You can't touch it. And yet the Fourth Amendment, which is supposed to safeguard privacy, really, for many Americans, they don't seem so exercised about it. They seem quite happy for the government to basically do as much rootling around as it wants if it's in the name of terrorism. Yes. It seems, Piers, that uh, patriotism is a, a positive thing, I suppose, when a nation is being formulated uh, from a diverse population against an imp oppressive imperial power, which, by which I mean our beloved country, Blighty. <laughs> uh, but when uh, th that uh, nation has become itself a uh, huge colonial power, Perhaps the obligations and responsibilities alter. And uh, patriotism, I think, primarily is between us as men, uh, between us as a nation and us as a society. Uh, for me, um, Edward Snowden, has, uh, it seems like, you know, like he, both him and Bradley Manning, mm. it seems that in both cases there's been a degree of self-sacrifice in both of their actions, which at least uh, from a uh, structural perspective, if making a screenplay, is one of the... Are uh, they factors. heroes, though? That's the definition of hero, is sacrificing yourself for others. But do you think that what they're doing is heroic? I mean, in Bradley Manning's case, to just scattergun release so much material From without what? any kind of judicious editing first, is I that I don't know much is about it, Piers, because, you know, like, I'm not a politician or anything, mm. but, like, uh, my understanding is that both Edward Snowden and Bradley Manning did approach superiors within the organisations with which they, within which they worked before making those uh, before making those leaks public so it seems that in both cases they sought to do it through the proper channels out of a legitimate concern for the way the organizations were behaving now anything that exposes american troops to danger or anyone to danger really is obviously negative but i think that perhaps under the, the masquerade of security uh, uh, many injustices can be done do you care how much a government rootles around your phone calls, emails. Yeah, I don't want them traffic. rootling around in my gear, mate. I, mean, I could imagine yours are quite lively. There's some lively stuff in there. I don't want that out there. <laughs> like, so they can just get into our Google, into our Facebook, Everything. into our emails. Oh, no, I'm going to have to completely revise my strategies. <laughs> They're all going to have to change. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, no, that, do, I don't... do you care? Yeah, I do, as a matter of fact. I think that we're, that's we're... what it comes down to. How far are you prepared to let a government do that kind of thing in the name of protecting you, keeping your country safer from potential attacks? Um, I think that we have to test the veracity of their intention to protect before handing over such enormous power. And it seems that the focus has fallen in both cases upon the, uh, the presumed culprits, Bradley Manning and Edward Snowden, when it's like, well, what, hold on a minute, what's this stuff that they revealed? Mm. That's quite interesting also. I'm not saying that there needs to be, obviously there needs to be judiciary inquiry and investigation into both uh, Snowden and Manning, but this information they've revealed in the case of Snowden that, like, all 
all of our information is accessible. That's pretty interesting mm. and important. And uh, the, some of the, the military uh, escapades also seem worthy of further scrutiny. So I think that we should be uh, perspicacious and open in our analysis of the data rather than directing our attention where it seems to be being designated at the, uh, day, uh, the uh, vilification of those two so individuals. The problem, I, I think, is what they do with the data. You know, if you could trust any government 100% to not misuse it, that's fine. But we've already seen with the IRS scandal that, you know, sometimes people get too tempted to do dodgy stuff with mm. your information. Me, mate, I don't trust the old governments. It's not just the American governments, English government, Swedish government, Swiss government. If it's a government, <laughs> I think, have a good look at them, see what they're up to. Let's take a short break. I want to come back and ask the question I think most of my viewers are asking every time you come on. Where did you learn all these long words? All right. Okay.